Briefly, I want to talk about the experience I had over the last three years uh, working with an amazing group of uh, young designers, engineers, and architects as part of teams on the Sustainable Habitat Challenge. Uh, it, the Sustainable Habitat Challenge is currently a network of people all around the country interested in understanding how we can create a more sustainable human habitat. Um, I got into this uh, several years ago as an as a energy researcher, inter looking at all of the ways in which we use energy, perhaps uh, a third in our lives through the products we buy, a third in the houses that we heat or the food that we eat, and a third in all the transport that we do. And all of that uh, energy is ultimately comes together in, in the requirements for how much we use comes together in our habitat, our human habitat, how it's constructed. And so I'm very interested in what happens if you give young people, uh, it, architects, engineers, builders, tradespeople, give them the pen and, and ask them to try what they can create for their future. What is their vision of future sustainability? So uh, we're asking people to get involved, actually, this year. Um, while it was limited to, to last year to teams at tertiary organizations, now we're looking for people uh, who are interested in designing and building or showing off their good uh, styles of living all around the country today. It started as a competition, but really we've got this national cooperative network. Um, and yes, we do have lots of supporters, um, you know, the institutions and such, so um, it's good to show that. But what we really have is groups of people. And uh, this, for instance, is a team up at the University of Auckland, the engineering school. Actually, not just the engineering school, there's uh, uh, y y young people from the art school, for, or from art programs and uh, commerce programs and engineering programs. Uh, here's a group of uh, young builders and apprentice tradespeople from CPIT. Um, they, that's Christchurch Polytechnic and Institute of Trades. Uh, all of the teams, what they were tasked to do was to look at housing problems, ha habitat problems in their community. This is an example from Wellington where they looked at uh, what they can do with inner city flats. Um, all of the teams were asked to collaborate not just work within their disciplines, not just architects, not just designers, not just engineers, uh, and it, it, to collaborate. And in fact, we had several situations where we were able to collaborate around the country using video technology such as this one. Uh, and also teams got together and worked with local groups and sort of really tried to stimulate imagination. This is in, in Wellington again. They got a group together and had people sort of draw visions of urban sustainability. And of course, this is just... <laughs> Uh, not a practical thing, but uh, a, a way of getting the mind going. But there was also some uh, engineering nous behind it. You know, we had young, uh, young engineers and, and professionals alongside them working to sort of say, well, how can we model what we're doing and uh, look at energy implications? And of course, there was a lot of, a lot of this project was just about doing, getting in and trying stuff out. And so here was the team on Rangitoto Island installing a new composting toilet to replace the long drop that had actually become quite a short drop. Uh, and a very important part about what these teams were doing was communication. It was about, uh, about telling, telling others, um, uh, you know, the next year's students or people in the community about what they were doing and why. And so this was, uh, some people did some filming in Christchurch for the local television station on about uh, the insulation they were putting in the house. And it's also a bit about celebration, coming together. And there's a, we have a, a every other year a conference. Um, we just had one last November, so there'll be another one next November in 2011 uh, that brings different disciplines together, discussing how are we trying to create this this habitat, this human habitat that just by its nature supports less reliance on resource, but is also a great place to live. And there's a lot of zaniness and experimenting and, and fun ways of communicating. I mean, this one team put together a storybook for uh, kids, you know, uh, seven to nine or such, uh, to sort of explain, oh, why the heck would you want to insulate your house anyways? And one, you know, and another team was looking at simplicity and about uh, how we can live simply with uh, the, 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 using our Kiwi heritage of the life of the batch. So we're looking actually all around the country for people who may want to participate. And you don't have to be associated with uh, uh, a tertiary organization, and in fact, everyone knows young people. 
So uh, if you'd like to uh, perhaps give a tour of your house or post a description of, 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 of the good ways of living that you've discovered uh, to, our, to our website, uh, or give a slideshow to local tertiary students and staff, or discuss your design ideas, or heck, even decide to design and build a place, um, we invite you to join the Shack Network. Uh, one of the most interesting things that came out of the last Shack project was just a very different vision, and this is all a result of giving young people the pen, it, of what types of sustainable living they might like to have and might like to, might like to desire. A, uh, a, uh, a, a sociologist at Massey University uh, did a study of the project and came up with several different classifications of, of types of, of sustainability uh, visions that were being developed. Uh, you know, some based around affordability and efficiency, others based around sort of reconnecting to the land, guardianship, Kaitiakitanga, and taking sort of high-tech solutions to low-tech um, problems, or, and vice versa. And others were new ways of living. And so, for instance, I'll just give you an example of what some of the teams came up with. Uh, the Farayuku team uh, what built rammed earth houses for rural Maori communities in remote locations. They said the biggest problem people have is just being able to build a house with local materials, local, um, uh, local people, and without a lot of money. And so they developed an earthen housing solution, which they also did some filming of, uh, that was built in Lake Rotoiti on the North Island. And uh, some people said that oh, perhaps it doesn't form and perform in technically thermally efficient ways that, that other houses do. But they said, well, that's not really the problem here. Of course, for the sustainability requirements for, these, for some communities is just having a house to begin with. And that's a good one. Uh, in Christchurch, uh, a group of people at the Polytechnic uh, the CPIT, what they did is they worked with engineers at Canterbury, and uh, Susan Crumdick actually had some engineers contributing. And they looked at how can we produce low-cost housing that suits the uh, a vast majority of the New Zealand market, something you can build for 150 grand and has three bedrooms and can be built in sections and also has a number of small features um, to promote heat flow among the house and uh, and more insulation, it's designed for the sun. Uh, and they produced this house, which was auctioned off successfully last year, and actually now is in Balclutha. Uh, and this is some of the videos. It was really amazing to see how this really brought together the staff, the students, and the different trades at, at CPIT and the engineers at the university um, in ways that we hadn't seen before. And people were really excited to work on this. This is an example of what their interior students came up with uh, all using, you know, low VOC products and, uh, uh, and and natural materials, but still appealing to people who like uh, this conventional style of house. Uh, another project that was part of the Sustainable Habitat Challenge was a retrofit of a, of a state house in Auckland. And this was uh, in partnership with Housing New Zealand, who wanted to see what could be done with a 1950s, 1940s state house to bring it up to modern standards and, in fact, to deal with some real issues that they had locally in the Auckland region, namely around water use, water, local water collection and use, and saving heating energy uh, for hot water. So they've got a heat pump water heater and a rain tank. Um, they also redid the, uh, the, uh, the interior a bit, adding insulation, preserving the original windows, but adding heat-retaining curtains, and also adding some indoor-outdoor flow with a deck. But uh, what I really liked is when there was a team from uh, Unitech uh, that focused on products, because of course it comes back to my thought that a third of the energy we use is all about the products we buy and, and how we use them. So one, one student there designed uh, a replacement washing pegs. It was all about sort of encouraging people to have fun with putting, hanging up their laundry again. Uh, so these are, these are washing pegs shaped like birds. Uh, another student came up with a design for, for gardens in inner city locations or highly populated locations um, so you can have sort of vertical things that attach to the downspouts. And another student just looked at what sort of products could we have in, in high density housing where you've got less space. How can you, how can you have uh, small well-made furniture for small well-made houses? And finally, the, the, the Wellington team looked at how can you revitalize inner city, uh, inner city apartments how can you make apartments so lovely for Kiwis, not used to living in apartments, 
uh, that they won't want to, say, commute from uh, Upper Hutt every day? How can you reduce transportation energy use and provide a great place to live? Um, so they looked at this uh, addition to the apartment building that we saw earlier uh, that would allow for um, uh, clothes drying, a place to grow food, potentially a place to get some solar energy, um, and uh, just generally revitalize the apartment. So the result of this uh, competition was, was the, co the collection of a whole slew of really amazing ideas and actual documented steps at how these ideas were achieved. Uh, there's, there's quite a lot of information on the website um, that we have the address, shack.org.nz. Um, most of the plans were published. Teams came into this with the idea that they would learn things and then share what they know. And a lot of that stuff is available online. In addition to that, we came into contact with many other good houses around the place, which we are still looking for more examples of, so I'd be happy to hear about that. Uh, this house in Golden Bay that was built by a builder who said, I don't want to do any more maintenance. I'm going to build this very low maintenance house with uh, low energy needs as well. It's got a beautiful view. Uh, and just in Hampton here, there's a, a, a really good example of a small, high quality house right on the train line, uh, also right on the beach. It can't get too much better than that. Uh, actually, the owner wants to let it for 200 a week if anyone, anyone wants one. <laughs> they're, they're, in, they're in Australia right now. Uh, great views. Um, there is actually a group right now in the East Cape trying to build a Paliropo like this. Not, this isn't the one. This was built earlier by some students at, at Unitech. But trying to really see what can be done for people who want to try different types of housing. Uh, and here in Dunedin, we've got uh, 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 Peter Lewis, who's working with plastic blocks, trying to find can they be used as building materials or perhaps as insulation under rib raft concrete floors. And there's some testing going on at the university about thermal properties of that block. And here at the Polytech, we've got people looking at how they can retrofit a, uh, a house on, on the campus to sort of show people what can be done for good retrofit opportunities. And to, uh, at Hamilton, they're also looking at a student center developing one that has houses students on campus. So there's lots of really good projects. I don't think we've seen half of them that are going on right now today. Um, one of the things that came up in, in the meetings today was the emotional connection that people were looking for with sustainability and the, um, and the need to sort of take practical steps to, to work on this today. And so uh, we, we've definitely seen this with the Shack project. Um, and um, yeah, I just invite everyone to join. Thank you.